podcast is sponsored by Easy Excel. Power Pivot for the Data Analyst Chapter 6, Calculated Columns. Hey, welcome back to the Mr. Excel Netcast. I'm Bill John. Well, this chapter we're taking a look at how to use the DAX language right in the Power Pivot grid to add new calculated columns. Before I do that, though, just in case you're not uh, familiar with these functions in Excel, let's talk about some great date handling functions in Excel. So let's say that we have a date up here, uh, July 6th, so 7-6-2010, and I want to break that down into year, month, and day. Excel gives us three functions that make this really, really easy. So equal year of that date uh, will give us 2010, equal month of that date will give us 7 for July, and equal day of that date will give us just the sixth. Okay, so those are built in. Unfortunately, they give us numbers. Of course, numbers are easy to sort, uh, but you know, it may not be how we want things to appear. So lots of times I will use the text function, text function. So equal text of that date. Press F4 there to lock that down and then say format it uh, as shown here to the left. So if we use the MMM format, you see we get JUL for July. I'll double click to copy this down. Uh, four M's will actually spell out the month, July. A single D will give us the day in a single digit for dates 1st through the 9th, or two digits for 10th through the 31st. But if you specify DD, then you get the very nice sort friendly two digits all the time. So instead of 6, you get 0, 06. Three D's gives you the day of the week abbreviation. Four D's actually spells out the day of the week. And then you can start to get creative. For example, YYMM would give you the year, a dash, and then the two-digit abbreviation. Or let's try YY-MMM uh, to actually give us the year and the month. Now that one's going to be really, really hard to sort uh, properly in Power Pivot, so that one's probably not even practical. Okay, so let's go and see how we can use that knowledge from Excel in the Power Pivot window. So we have a date field here, uh, and we want to add a new calculated column, so we just start with an equal sign and type the function that you want to use. So I want to use the year function. You notice as soon as I type Y, they offer a couple of choices here. I'll press tab to choose year, and then they want to know which field. OK, now, uh, hardcore Excel people know that we can use the arrow keys to go back to that field. Unfortunately, Power Pivot does not support the arrow keys. Uh, you have to either start to type the field name or just use the mouse to click on it. I know most hardcore people hate to use the mouse, uh, uh, but here we are. It's, it's just the, the, what we have to do. Click the closing parenthesis, and very quickly it will give us the year column for those 1.8 million rows. Again, bad heading. I wish they uh, would just prompt us for the heading because we're going to have to change that heading every single time. I'll call this year. All right, and I could do similar things for month and for day using the month and day functions. Again, most functions that we use here in this grid are exactly like the functions that we use in Excel. The one glaring difference is the text function, which is so commonly used in Excel, is not spelled text here, it's spelled as format. So we'll use equal format, click on the field that we want, a comma, and then in quotes whatever format we would like to use. So I'm going to spell out the month completely, that would be four M's in quotes, closing quote, closing parenthesis. Uh, Press Enter and let that calculate down. And again, once we get the answer, uh, you have to right click and change that horrible heading to uh, something a bit more friendly. All right, so there you have it. Uh, just a sampling of some of the many DAX functions that you can use to create new calculations right here in the grid. Chapter 6 uh, has a complete list of all those DAX functions and examples of how to use them. Uh, I figure this is the one that you're going to run into most often, so I figure this is what we do in the podcast. Alright, well I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel.